You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Living Without Lies with your host, Donna Warren. You're not alone if you've been the victim of abuse, drug usage, or rape. Living Without Lies is here to help. Listen as Donna Warren assists women across the country break the cycle and help create a new life. So now, please welcome the host of Living Without Lies, Donna Warren. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome to the Living Without Lies program. My name is Donna Warren. I'm your host. <coughs> and, uh, you know, we've been on for quite a long time now. And I was going to talk about, you know, control, letting people control you and, you know, the choices you have to make. But uh, something just occur- happened that I'm going to talk about something totally different tonight. I want to talk about what happens in... You know, one of the things we deal about, you know, in the Living Without Lies program is not to tell untruths. And, uh, you know, I always say that honesty with other people is optional, that you must be brutally honest with yourself. Well, unfortunately, apparently I've been a little bit too honest of late, <coughs> and I just got fired. And I got fired for, one was a technical reason because of a, training course I'm taking that I haven't quite completed and is required by the state here. But others, there was a complaint from a, uh, one of my students that apparently um, they found out or knew too much about my background and now it's a problem and nothing was ever said to me and they complained to their, they were they're under the workforce development program and they complained to their worker who complained to the Department of Labor and I'm out of a job and I just found out about it about 10 minutes ago. And I don't know quite what to say about it because, you know, I've spent the last several years uh, trying to be a good example to other people, trying to help other people fix their lives, and maybe I've gotten too comfortable with being me. I don't know, and uh, I honestly don't know what to do about that sort of thing, and part of me saying, you know, F it the hell with everybody else and take care of yourself but another part of me is saying you're not going to be happy with that you're not going to like that and you're not going to be able to do that and be comfortable and happy and with myself and I don't quite know what to do what do you think Dee? We were talking about this before the show so what do you think? Well you have to be true to yourself and that's pretty much number one and uh, so you know, you you have to start thinking about, you know, what what is going to be best for you, and and to stay true to yourself, to say stay true to your values. Uh, you're a strong person and a good person, and you're uh, very much an inspiration to me, and I hope yes. you are to many people because you have overcome so much, and of course life really isn't fair and it makes it really hard for all of us to um, you know to be able to um, when things happen to uh, to overcome them but uh, the worst thing we could possibly do is to give up uh, or give in and um, and so uh, and, and we have to believe in yourself and I know I know you do believe in yourself and uh, and so I think that is a really uh, important thing and then uh, you know there's always prayer but I, I think that you just be true to yourself and your values and it's going to work out all right because when one door closes another opens we don't know how this is all going to turn out yet 
but I know it'll turn out for the best for you as long as you stay by your values. Yeah, I hope so. So it what will. else should we... What else are we going to talk about tonight? I'm obviously not in that great a mood to be on the show tonight. And, uh, you know, I was comfortable where I was. I liked what I was doing, and I don't know what the problem the problem was, and I don't understand. So what can we talk about, Dee? What, what else would we like to talk about? Disappointment? The fact that uh, it looks like, you know, sometimes I swear it feels like that, my past will, unless I lie about it and hide it, it's going to come back and make my life miserable. And I don't understand why that has to be that way. I shouldn't have to lie all the time. I shouldn't have to hide everything. I did it for 25 years. For the 20, first 25 years of my life, I was afraid for my life, trying to stay alive. The second 25 years of my life, I was scared to death people would find out about the first 25 and in 2009, I wrote an autobiography, which I put out there, which put the truth out there where I can't hide from it. And it has come up and bit me in the ass more than once in the last 10 or 15 years. And, and at the same time, I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel that part of my purpose on this planet is to be living proof that who you, what you were and who you were in the past doesn't have to control what you are and who you are in the present and what you are now today doesn't have to control who you are in the future. And I feel that I'm living proof of that. But at the same time, you know, every time I turn around like these things happen and if when I am honest, I get kicked in the you know, I get kicked in the gut and I don't know what to do about it. And you know, I'm you know, if I don't find some other source of income within the next month or so, I could end up losing everything I have. And I don't honestly know what to do about it, what to think about it, and I'm kind of the one that needs counseling today. And well, if the world's not fair, I don't expect it to be. I never expected it to be fair, but I don't quite understand. You know, I just don't understand people doing that to other people, deliberately hurting them. I don't understand it. What about you, Dee? Well, gosh, it isn't. It, that's that's the that's the thing. And I know I've tried very very hard too to uh, to turn things around. And um, my case is a little bit different, but but the uh, past haunts me, uh, particularly now because I, I wasn't aware of it for a long long time, and now I am. And uh, and it's just hard to believe that. You know, uh, my parents did the things to me that they did, and um, and it just um, sometimes it's overwhelming. Uh, that's uh, I, and you just have to be so strong. And there's times when I'm not strong, and and uh, and I I just have. To and then I get mad at myself once I have a good cry and and um, and start thinking about it. Then I get mad at myself and, and make up my mind that I know there's answers and I'm going to find them. And um, so then I start analyzing the situation and and uh, trying to find out, you know, just what the best options are. I do know for sure that. When, when one door closes, other ones open, and uh, you don't know yet, you know, exactly what decision will be made, uh, because it could turn around, uh, hopefully. Um, um, maybe you'll have an opportunity to, to talk to the student, to, you know, to just kind of find out, you know, just what was it and what the problem really was, see if there's some way that, uh, you know, you can... Uh, can work all of that out uh, if, if that isn't an option. Um, uh, there's a very good possibility, you know, that, that you will find uh, another teaching job or maybe there's something else. You know, you were talking to me uh, earlier about how your mind is, is working on something. You're not real sure what it is yet and maybe, 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 maybe you, need, you will need to have have time freed up so you can work on whatever that is. 
Uh, so, you know, there's, you know, that possibility too. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, facing some rough situations myself, and and I'm not sure how it's going to uh, turn out. Uh, but I do know uh, that somehow it will turn out well. And uh, sometimes we don't know the how. We just have to have to know what we want. You have to focus on what you want, what kind of an outcome. We can talk about this in a little bit. I think they said we need to go okay. on a break. Yes, we do. We, yeah, I was told we need to go for commercials. So um, if you want to call in and talk to us, it's 866-451-1451. Or you can text me at 732-995-3969. Or you can leave a comment on the BBC Global Network website uh, underneath the show there's a blog leave us a comment and we'll be back in a few the earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history it was around 3100 bc when the sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back, folks. Um, Enough of what we talked about before. We're going to go back to talking about what we had originally planned to talk about today. Uh, I just needed to get that off my chest so I could think. And we were originally planning to talk about control. You know, one of the things that uh, when you've been an abused child or an abused, you know, woman, adult woman, one of the things that uh, the abusers think is that they're in control and Actually, they are, but if they're in control because we allow them to be in control. Now, I know that when I was getting shit beat out of me by my husband, I was afraid of him. And my choice was either let him think he was in control and do what he told me to do, or he would hurt me, maybe even kill me because he threatened to kill me enough times. And, you know, it was a matter of, as as the saying always goes, well, why didn't you leave? Well, I was married to this man. He knew my family. He knew all of my friends. You know, I was a high school dropout. I had no special talents. You know, where was I supposed to go in that situation? What was I supposed to do? What do you think, Dee? Well, I I was in a similar situation, and, um, and I... Didn't really know what to do either. I I didn't have a young child, and um, and I didn't really um, I didn't have a job. I didn't I, I didn't know what to do, and I ended up staying way too long. Uh, but that was my choice. I could have left. I I didn't really think there were any choices, any good choices, and. Um, so I didn't make any choices, which, of course, is a choice in and of itself. And so, but eventually I did make that 
that um, that, that choice. And uh, I, I did end up back with my parents for a short time, got things back together, and, uh, and I got a divorce and that kind of thing. But um, it was a hard decision. And, and yeah. I think many people uh, stay with people that are, are controlling them in that way. And, and I'm the type of person that um, I'm, I'm not... Uh, very bold and brave uh, and being able to stick up for myself. I'm a lot better than I used to be, uh, but I'm I'm just more of a timid person, and it's very difficult for people uh, that are like that to be able to stand up for themselves, and, and uh, particularly uh, if you don't really know what your options are or where to go to get the kind of help that you need. Uh, fortunately, there are so many avenues out there right now uh, to help you, uh, it's, it's a whole lot better, uh, but it really wasn't back then, and um, and so, and then, and then, I mean, that's why Donna and I are here right now, is because uh, we both have been through so much, and we've learned so much, and we've grown so much, we've overcome so much, that we can take that knowledge that we have and offer solutions to problems and to help you to overcome uh, difficulties. And it doesn't mean we, we stop going through those things. There's always the challenges, and they help us to grow. And, um, and we really do have more control over our lives than we believe. Uh, part of it is, uh, is our attitude uh, and how we decide to... Um, when, uh, when faced with a situation, are we going to be a better person or are we going to be a bitter person or are we going to, uh, are we going to, to allow this to be a time to grow? There's a lesson in everything that happens to us. Lots of times we're not aware of that. But if we are aware, the more we become aware that there's a lesson uh, and it's a lesson and an opportunity to grow and to become more and to give us strength. Uh, and um, part of it is when, when we're faced with these things, we don't really have to know the how. We just have to know what it is that we really want. How do we want it to change? And to be focusing on that, to seeing that in our minds uh, and really making it real to us. Uh, I, I know I had, have, um, have read on a lot of instances like, you know, when a person is um, out of work or, or in a situation uh, that, that's uh, bad, you start doing things that you would normally do if you had the results that you want. And so um, that's one, you know, that's one thing each day, you know, you can take, you can take maybe seven minutes a day, first of all, uh, just visualizing and seeing how you want things to be. And then uh, the more you can simulate those things as if it's already happened uh, helps an awful lot too. Uh, so, uh there are a lot more things that we can do, and we don't really, again, have to know the how. We have to be open as, as we do that and we ask for guidance uh, on, on how to overcome these things. Uh, we have to believe, you know, that uh, the answer is there, that is coming to us, and we have to be open to different things that are going on around us uh, as we are believing these things, and like I said, even taking time each day to act as if it's already happening. Uh, and uh, sometimes it might be something somebody says to you. It could be uh, a sign you see. It could be uh, uh, words in a song. Uh, it could be something uh, on a show, on TV, or a movie. Uh, there's a lot of ways that um, that. Uh, the answers will come to us uh, if we uh, do these things and become more aware and then also aware of our own self-talk. And uh, when we find ourselves 
uh, being negative, uh, you know, try to turn that around. And uh, and the more positive you can be, then, you know, the easier it becomes. But, but uh, it's very true that these things will absolutely turn around and come to you the more you're able to do that. It takes time and it takes some practice, but it really does work. And um, so I just, that was something I wanted to share. Okay, so what what you're saying is that uh, what we were talking about control before, like I said, uh, I think I may have said this in the past, but when I was, you know, using and I got clean, I was taught the serenity prayer a little differently than most people learn it because my sponsors figured I needed to have it explained to me. And they taught me that, you know, to say it this way, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, which is everyone and everything outside of myself. Courage to change the things I can, which is me and only me. And the wisdom to know the difference, which is difficult because our egos interfere. And uh, I just got to notice that we need to go to commercial. We'll just pick this up when we come back. If you want to talk to us, it's 866-451-1451. Or you can text me at 732-995-3969. Or you can leave a comment on the uh, BBM Global Network website under the Living Without Lies program on the blog. And we'll be back in a few. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back, folks. Before the break, we were talking. I had told you the version of the Serenity Prayer that I was taught. And, you know, I'm going to apply that to what's going on with me right now. The only thing I can change is myself. I can't change what other people think. I can't change what other people do. I can only sit back and wait and see what they decide. However, I can control what I do. You know, I could throw a hissy fit and fight it and all this, and I'm not going to. But what I can control is how I look at this. You know, Dee tried to tell me, and she may be right, perhaps this is just that I'm supposed to not supposed to be doing what I was doing, that I should be doing something else. And one way to get me to do it is to put me in a position where I don't have a choice and I have to go do something. And that is how I see things right now. And, you know... My attitude toward this is I'm just in a state of shock. I didn't expect this, and uh, I don't really understand why what's happening is happening. Who knows? But uh, the point is uh, things do work out, and it's up to me to change my attitude toward what's going on and to figure out what I'm going to do about it. You know, um, I need another source of income now, but it doesn't necessarily have to be teaching. 
I can do other things as well. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do. What do you think, Dave? Well, I, I think that's that's very true. And, and, I mean, you've got many talents, um, and maybe it's time for a change. And, and you said that you, you know, that you were working on something. And, uh, and so whatever that is, that might be, you know, exactly, you know, what is going to be uh, the best for you and serve others the best. And so, uh, you know, this could be exactly what you, well, it probably is. I mean, that's the way it works out. Um, it, whatever it is that we need is usually what happens. I mean, if if we are open, you know, if we are open to to what's happening and and trying to learn the lesson and find the opportunities, there, there's always a lesson and opportunities in every adversity. And that's something I learned a long time ago. And when you're going through it, boy, it's really, really hard. But at the same time, if you can continue to remind yourself of these things, uh, it, it, it does turn out a whole lot better. I mean, I've lost everything about six times. And, I mean, every time I ended up much better, much better. And... Um, yeah, I mean, so, and, and again, I mean, you just have to be patient. You have to be open. I mean, I didn't know all the stuff that I know now back then, but yet that's how things turned out. But now that I have the knowledge that I have, uh, I have a lot more to work with when these types of things happen. And like I was saying, too, I get mad you know, after after I fall apart and say and tell myself, no, I, I'm not going to be like this. I'm not going to allow this to mess me up. I'm going to find the answers. And, uh, you know, what I was talking about before on, you know, how how you actually are can set and visualize and how you can uh, be uh like I said, if you if you, you if you needed a job, you can act as if you already have that job and see yourself doing whatever it might be that you would like to be able to do, and and see in detail, uh, maybe even getting up uh, each day and um, and putting on the clothes that you would be putting on if you were do, going to be doing whatever it is, and. Uh, and just going through the motions uh, as if it were already happening. I mean, this. Re I mean, our, you're reprogramming your mind to to have what you want. I mean, we usually. I mean, there's so many more effective ways we can use our mind than we're aware of, and and of course, this has to do with control too. We have a lot more control over our lives than we believe, and. Um, and again, there's a reason why these why these things happen, because usually there's something greater out there for us if we handle it well. And and also there's a lesson, and then there's growth. And um, usually there's the greatest growth, you know, during times of trial, if we allow that to happen. I mean, we can just, uh, you know, have. A, a negative, you know, so negative attitude and just give up and just go the other way, you know, that's not going to solve anything. Uh, and then again, being really focused and, and even writing down, you know, the, what you are, the outcome that you're, you're looking for. Or, um, and of course you can see, you can sit there and try to figure out what the different options are. Uh, and then there might be some that you've not even thought of. You just know what it is, the end result that you want and uh, and be more open to the things that are going to be shown to you. Uh, like I said, either through uh, you know through somebody talking, or or uh, it could be a billboard. It could be anything. Uh, different thoughts and different ideas will be presented to you, and you can act on those, and and it will help you. So. Um, and that's what's been so helpful to me now is to know that I have options and ways of, of turning things around that I never had uh, when I was younger. 
Okay. And, yeah, I know that's a possibility. One of the things is, you know, with the Living Without Lies Foundation, one of the things we've been trying to do is open a shelter in North Philadelphia for single women. And one of the things we need is to raise money. And that's one of the things I don't know that much about, and Dee doesn't either. We really don't know about that and need somebody to really help us figure out how to do that. And one of the things I would like to do is I would like to go out here and speak to groups on what the background was like, what can be done, how it relates to what's going on out there in the world today, what I think we can do about it, how I think I can fix it. I'm working on getting our, my program online where people can, you know, get into it. And if anyone out there has any ideas or suggestions, please, I'm asking for your help. Please contact me and let me know what those suggestions might be. We have to go to commercial right now, and uh, we'll be back in a few seconds. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back, folks. Before the break, I was talking about the fact that the Living Without Lives Foundation is trying to open a women's shelter in North Philadelphia. And the big problem is we don't have the money to get a building. And as I said, if anybody out there has any suggestions on how we can better raise money to do it or know someone who would give us a building at some reasonable price, you know, or maybe even for donate a building, because as far as I know, you can still take that off of your tax returns if you donate it to a charity. We are a 501c3 charity, and all contributions to us are tax deductible. So that if somebody gives us a building, they can do that. And I'm sure if they leased it to us, you know, for a reasonable amount of money, we could, you know, they could also probably deduct part of that. But uh, I'm asking for people's help. One way I can raise money I know would be to go out and speak to people, go out on a fundraising tour, and I don't know how to go about doing that. And if there's anyone out there who's willing to help, knows how to help, would like to help, please contact me. You know, I'm at a position here where I need to do something to get things rolling, and I don't know what to do. So please, if you have any suggestions or help, contact me. Let me know what's involved, and I'm more than willing, you know, to take your advice and do whatever is possible to make things better. What do you think, Dee? I think that's a great idea. Give me your number again. My phone number is 732-995-3969. And you can uh, call that. My email address is donna.warren at comcast.net. It's my name. 
And I can be reached at either one of them. If anyone has any ideas or suggestions, would like to donate, you can go on our website, the livingwithoutlies.com site, and donate to, uh, you know, to the uh, foundation to get us a building. And what we need to get it to get is a building to get started. And so far, we haven't been able to come up with enough money to do that. And like I said, anything that anyone who knows anything about that and is willing to help us, please contact us. Please contact us. Because we want to help other people, get other people off the street. And maybe what Dee said is right. Maybe my teaching people how to work with computers is not what I should be doing right now. That I should be helping people how, figure out how to fix their lives and make a better life for themselves. And I need to do that. I need to get the building open. I need to get my program online. That I can work on. Now I've got more time to work on it and get my program online. But I, I'm willing to take any suggestions or help that anybody can offer to get me get us off, you know, going. Because ultimately, in a month or so, I'm going to have to go to work or lose my home. So, you know, uh, I have to find something in the meantime. Dee, what do you think about what's happening? What do you think about what well, I just said? I, I think uh, I like what you said, and, I, and I'm, I'm really feeling that, that uh, I mean, you've, you've, you're working almost to the point where you've got your uh, program, going to be able to put your program online, and uh, you actually need more time to do that. And once you do that and people see, I mean, from the, from the uh, times that we've been on the air and talking to people, they can see the knowledge that you have, uh, and and they also realize that uh, we're wanting to help people to get off the streets, to be able to turn their lives around and become productive people. So uh, maybe there are a lot of people out there who can can use. Uh, the kind of information that you have in your program to help them, and uh, and so I think that that could be something right there, uh, and and you have other talents also. Maybe there will be a way that you can take maybe more than one of your talents and put it together, um, and in a, a, a different and creative and unusual way that will really be amazing. I certainly hope so because right now I'm feeling not feeling too confident about anything. But uh, I believe there's a way to do it, and you know, but it's not something I'm going to be able to do by myself. I do need input from other people, suggestions, methods on how to do some of this stuff. And I know there's people out there who have ideas and suggestions and know what to do. And, you know, I, I really am asking for your help and would appreciate it, those of you getting in contact with me. The foundation and getting people, getting women off the street, you know, I, we were hoping to get it up and running, you know, before it gets cold again. It's no fun living outside in the cold. No fun sleeping out on the sidewalk or on the grass and when it's 80 or 90 out either. We want to get these people off the street so that they can have a chance to do something, you know, and... You know, I'm sure that whatever's supposed to be will. I have no idea why this ju this thing has just happened. It may resolve itself and things may be okay again and I may go back to teaching and I may not. I don't know. I know that, you know, I want to share what I know about how to overcome the problems that so many people are suffering from. I understand why people get addicted to drugs. I understand why these things happen. And I know a way around and how to fix it. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I've done it for myself and I've other people that have used my program have done it also. I know it works. I just have to figure out how to get it out there and make it, you know, um, available to people. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I was just told I believe that we have to go to commercial. So, uh you know, we'll be back in a few. Give us a call at 866-451-1451. Uh, text me or call me at 732-995-3969. You know, or leave us a message on the blog on the <clears throat> Roll Bray Media website under the Living Without Lies program. We'll be back in a few. Abuse happens every moment of every day. 
According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before the break, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, that I'm looking for advice from people on how we can get the money, get up money for to get our shelter open and how we can get things and move on, and uh, which was the whole purpose of this show and the whole purpose of the foundation. And uh, if you have any suggestions, please contact us. You know, look at it this way. Whatever, we've talked about a lot of things over the last year because we've been on almost a year now and we've talked uh, about a lot of things about finding out your true beliefs about finding out what you really want out of life once you figure that out you know uh, and being pretty honest with yourself so that there's no need for you to continue to gamble or take drugs or you know drink alcohol or whatever your addiction of that is that there's no real need for you anymore because you've gotten past the point of needing something to make you feel okay to make you feel like you're good enough to make you feel like you know everything's fine you there are ways around that once you figure out what it is that you believe and start to live by your true beliefs you will find out exactly what it is you need. You know, there's. I listen to some other shows, and sometimes they've got all these solutions. But you know what? There is no simple solution to this stuff. The only way you can fix your life is to look at yourself, find out what it is what you believe, deal with every, anything and everything that you've done that you're ashamed of or that's caused you problems, figure out why you did it, what you got out of it, when you figure out all those things and you come up with a, a situation where you truly believe what you're doing and you're living by your beliefs, you're working to get something that you truly want, and you'll be able to do this. And once you can do that, it is easy to become successful because, uh, you know, all success out there is built on failure. We don't do any – I don't – you know, there may be somebody out there who does something perfectly the first time, but I'll be honest with you, I've never met anyone like that. They may exist, but I haven't met one. I know for me, trying things is trying them, failing, uh, trying something different each time and keep trying and keep tinkering with it and messing with it until I find something that works. I find something that works. I did that for years as an engineer, fixing computers and electronic gadgets. I kept messing with it until I figured out what was wrong with it or at least some idea of what was wrong with it and found a way to fix it and make it work. I did exactly the same thing with my life. I looked around until I figured out what was causing my problems, you know, what I was doing, my part in it, and how to stop what I was doing and to stop being who I was and how to 
accept myself. I don't, you know, people say forgive yourself. Well, that's fine. But I think the definition of the word forgive means to accept that you or whoever else, if it's somebody else were forgiven, that whoever it was did what they did and were capable of doing it. That's forgiveness, accepting the fact that you did it. Does it make it right? No. Do you feel bad about some of it? Of course you do. It depends what it is. But accepting the fact because once something is done, people, you can't undo it. You can't undo it. Once it happens, it's, you know, it's there. We can't change the past. We can only hope to change the present. And by changing the present, make changes in the future possible. Because until we are willing to try something new and different, nothing's going to change. Am I upset with myself right now about what's happened? Yes, I am. Apparently, I did do something wrong, but I don't even know what I did. And that's all right. Apparently, I said something I shouldn't have or said something in front of someone or within earshot of someone who didn't like what they heard and decided that based on what they heard, I was a piece of crap that shouldn't be there and should never be allowed to be in front of people. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened, but that's kind of what, from what I've been told, that's what it sounds like. And can I stop all the prejudice and bias and stuff in the world? No. No, we can't. You have to learn to live with it and deal with it. So, you know, hopefully by finding out what's going on, you can fix whatever the immediate problem is. You can fix the immediate problem. I can't change what anyone else does or what anyone else thinks, but I can change what I do and what I think and how I react, you know, and do something about it. I can sit around and feel sorry for myself. That's pretty tempting sometimes, but it doesn't accomplish anything over the long run. So what do you think, Dee? Oh, it sounds sounds like a plan to me. Uh, It really does, so. Uh, and we, we have to, like you said, we have to look at our situation, uh, figure out what happened, figure out why it happened. And if there's any way to fix that, well, that, that would be good. Try to be open to uh, whatever suggestions or whatever. If it isn't going to work out the way that we'd like, then, then we have to start looking around at other things, uh, looking at our, our, our different abilities, our skills. Uh, do we need to learn new skills, or, or, or can we just take what we have and, and, and uh, try to find creative ways to use what we have? And, uh, and so that is definitely something that's going to happen. Your attitude really has a lot to do with it, and we all go through uh, this time when, when things hit us. You know, you panic, you don't know what to do, you, you just... Uh, you know, it's really, really bad, but then you ha- you get over that, and then you start really thinking about it and finding out as much as you can, and then start making a plan. And again, uh, simulating, uh, you know, the desired result and writing it down and, um, and, uh, and being open, you know, asking and being open for for the answers because they will come to you if you don't doubt. You know, if you keep believing and knowing that, you know, if, if as long as I keep on working at this, I'm going to find the answer. And, and if you do, you are, you're going to. And um, we know so much more about the mind and how it works uh, than we ever did. And um, lots of times we... Part of the problem is most of us think about what we don't want. We're always thinking about what we don't want. And so uh, we <laughs> tend to get what we don't want. And um, But just even thinking about our own self-talk and, and changing it and, and really dwelling on a lot of the times where you have uh, – actually turn things around and, and you even if it's a, if it's a small victory, uh, you know, it's something to be really looking back on all of the good things that you've been able to accomplish, even little tiny things, uh, because often we forget about that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think, I think what you're saying is, is very good. And, um, and, 
we're going to get through all of this. And I'm um, working on my situation, too. Uh, I was just told we need to go to a commercial, so um, if give us a call if you want to talk, 866-451-1451. Text or call me at 732-995-3969, uh, and we'll be back in a few. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before the break, I was talking about the foundation and what we can do. And, you know, I don't know, today this was a different type of show. And the fact that one of the reasons I decided to talk about this stuff was I thought perhaps it would be helpful to some other, someone else to hear how I dealt with it. I usually sound pretty competent. I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty upset. And I'm not too happy with anyone at the moment. But I know that I can't sit and wallow in self-pity. I could, but I don't see where it would serve any purpose. And that would only make me feel worse than I already do. But I ho- I'm hoping that someone hearing this might have some idea. Maybe someone needed to hear how I deal with a problem like this. Because this is not minor. Being fired serious because it's a good chunk of my income. And, uh, you know, but it. I don't know why things happen. I'm assuming it's happening for a reason and that things will eventually work out. You know, that has always been true for me. When I truly need something, it becomes available to me. And I have no idea what's going on. I do know that, again, the foundation, we are trying to get a a building so that we can get single homeless women off the street. And, you know, there was a time when most of the single homeless women out there we're drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes, etc. That's not true anymore. There's a lot of older women and elderly women out there, you know, who they're especially they were seeing Oriental women, which is rare, uh, was unheard of five years ago. Uh, their grandchildren have taken over their homes. Their husbands have died. You know, there's crime going on. There's drugs going on. There's things going on that they don't want to live in, uh, or and sometimes they're just kicked out. Or in one case of my co-founder of the foundation works in a shelter and she had a woman whose family, she'd always done everything for them, taken all the responsibility and, you know, never received any gratitude or a thank you. And she just walked out. She'd had it. She was tired of being taken advantage of and she left. Now, being in a shelter, I don't know if that's any better, but she just had it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there like that, and they're doing what they can. Ultimately, you know, uh, they can get the help they need. And in many cases, they need some more training so that they can get a job. You know, and that's especially true for the older people. 
And, you know, hopefully, if you can, uh, you know, give me a call. Tell me, Give me some ideas on how to raise money to get the building that we need. Once we get the building, we should be able to – we'll be fine. But we got to get a building first. So if you want to go to the website, if you'd like to donate something, go to the website. It's Living Without Lies, L-I-E-S dot com. That's the website. If you want to help us, get in touch with us. You know, call me, tell me about it. You know, anything that you can do to help will be appreciated. So, you know, uh, let's have something good come out of this. You know, um, and Rudy, do you have anything to say before we go away for today? I just think that, uh, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity for you. Uh, uh, Yin-yang, uh, the opposites, um, opportunity on riding a dangerous wind. Uh, so... There, there's something good that's going to come from this. You may not know what it is yet, but if you have faith and keep on uh, and and do the things that you have been talking about, you're, we're, we're going to be okay. You're going to be just fine. And uh, okay. I'm very proud of you. You're well, we're going to have to keep it up. Si- need to sign off now. So, folks, uh, appreciate you coming and listening to us today. I hope you have a nice weekend, a nice week ahead. You know, uh, we'll come. We'll be back to talk to you again next week. And so, God bless you, and God bless America. You've been listening to Living Without Lies with your host Donna Warren. Contact Donna at DLUHRS at Comcast dot net or call seven three two nine nine five three nine six nine for information about the Living Without Lies Foundation. You are not alone on the path to building a new life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.